This video is, is specifically for everybody, especially this part. So let's just jump right into it. So number one, if you want to have success in this field, all right, if I, if I could give you a roadmap per se, you don't know where to begin. These are seven steps you can actually dive right into to help you easily get off the ground to kind of have some guidance and, and some sort of like goalpost almost, some way to get to the goalpost. Number one, determine if school, computers, uh, computer, computer science specifically is right for you. Now, there's other tech degrees you can get, like information technology and, and that sort of thing. Even I, I went to DeVry, and I get a lot of flack for going to DeVry, but I don't regret it at all. And I have a web graphic design two-year degree. I wanted a digital trade, you know, which is the reason why I went to DeVry. And this was back in 2011 and 2013, and it served me well, you know. So, you, you But you need to make that determination if you feel better about going to school and getting a computer science degree to support and back you up in your pursuits, then I would recommend that. Just have a plan to pay off the debt that you're going to accrue, or you may not even have debt. A lot of people like to say that college is a lot of debt. That's true. You could actually get grants. You can actually get a scholarship. However you're doing this, especially if you're in high school watching this video right now, you're making that determination, or you just got, you, you got graduated from high school. You never went to college. There's a long gap in between the time that you actually went to school, uh, left high school, and now you want to go back, this is something you need to actually consider, all right? Now, there are a lot of companies that are still looking to see if you have a degree. There's a lot of YouTubers that like you to believe that, you know, companies aren't looking for you to have a degree, but that's not necessarily entirely true. And probably what's going to be more important, whether you have a degree or not, is if you have a portfolio or somebody has seen your skill set, which let's go into number two and actually talk about being self-taught in programming. Now, I'm talking about more specifically programming right now. I'm not talking about really the design aspect, though. We can consider that, but this is more so if you're getting into coding and programming. So if you're self-taught, that means that uh, you could pursue things such as um, Treehouse, uh, um, freecodecamp.org. There's a lot of free coding resources that you can actually jump right into. And usually the trajectory, especially if you're trying to learn code on the web, is <coughs> excuse me html css those are the two foundational building blocks learning those all right which shouldn't take you that long at all then migrating into javascript and actually i can i would actually suggest that you could probably stay in the lane of javascript because javascript right now is being is it's pretty multifaceted in a lot of things that you can actually build gaming applications now nah, use it for web building building um back-end technologies all sorts of things even if you're trying to build um like like angular and react those sorts of things frameworks you're trying to build frameworks javascript based so you can actually stay in that lane but you need to start having projects so you're learning the language but you need to have an end goal okay what am i going to do it's like get being you know oh, this is going to sound horrible i'm not going to even use that, that analogy let's just keep it as straightforward as possible so you have all this javascript knowledge this coding knowledge but what are you what what's the end result what's the end game with it you know, are you trying to build a, a game with it? Or are you just trying to do some functionality on a website? What are you trying to do? You have to have something tangible that could be seen and, and technically felt um, when you're actually pursuing that. So you need to kind of, if you're doing self-taught route, you need to kind of have some projects under your belt to showcase what you know and, and demonstrate that. So whether, number three, whether you're self-taught or have a bachelor's degree, you have to share what you know. And there's three pieces of, there's three platforms I'm going to suggest. And you notice there's not Facebook, there's not Instagram, there's not Twitter, anything like that. But why did I suggest YouTube, LinkedIn, and Medium.com? Well, more specifically, I, to me, this is a trifecta. This is a trifecta platform that's going to be very beneficial in terms of um, you putting out the right content. You're not just sitting up here. See, with the other platforms, you'll be tempted to put out some silly playful other types of crap that you don't really need to put out but if you're intentional you know with youtube linkedin and medium on youtube you see that i have a channel mostly it's all you know um educational based. it's, it's serious it's, it's intended to teach somebody something to where they get some value in their life and it's very recipro reciprocal because here's the thing <coughs> i don't know why i'm coughing so much excuse me here's the thing um, whatever you learn, if you're able to teach it, that would be a clear indication in terms of how well you actually know 
your coding base, how well you have you how well you you've grasped your coding knowledge if you're able to actually, you know, showcase it back out, shell it back out to another audience. You know, that would be an indication of you of how well do I actually know Let's say, for example, you focus just on learning JavaScript. You know, immediately when you start, even if you don't have a degree, if you begin to learn something, you start sharing it, making videos, getting some screencast omatic, you know, software. I have a link in the description for that as well. So check that out too, because that's what I'm using to make this video right here. But sharing what you know, your your knowledge base, making putting yourself out there as the expert. Forget all this. These these dumb thoughts of like I don't I've only been in coding for like a month I don't know much of anything you if you've been in coding for a month and depending on what you're building with that code you're far you're far more ahead of the game than a lot of people that's out there right now you may be, even be further than I am I've been at this for like eleven years almost so uh, you want to be able to put this out there and that's what YouTube is going to serve start building a library of what you actually know start sharing start building some cool projects there's people that's using their javascript knowledge to freak super mario games and they, even with css they're freaking and recreating like super mario games and taking the css to make like whole pac-man pac-man art you know so you can figure out once you actually have a firm grasp of that knowledge you can really do some really cool things with it which brings me into the next platform of linkedin now we know if you don't know, LinkedIn is a, supposed to be a professional platform. A lot of people will argue that it's going the way of Facebook right now, but I still beg to differ. It's still much, very much so a very professional platform. You can actually earn and test for the skills that you know. You know, put yourself to the test so you can get some, uh, get a certificate through LinkedIn's offering. And they they do offer several like programming certificates. I have a CSS certificate, cascading style sheet certificate. Um, demonstrating I have an expertise in terms of knowing CSS so um, you can actually take those tests and then when you actually take it you'll rank higher in terms of um, what people are looking for and, and getting an expert in a certain coding field base you can actually put out knowledge and put out helpful knowledge that will show what you know and maybe even I have a, a, a person a friend that I have on LinkedIn that always shows that he's always taking a course and accomplishing something. All right, but you want to maybe put some short video clips in terms of how to maybe execute this cool little function and and you just freaking people out with it. You know, so that that is the purpose of LinkedIn. So and then with Medium.com, you can actually write uh, how-to tutorials. You can actually put out written content. Medium is going to be for the written content. So if you're able to formulate long-form how-tos. Or demonstrations you know of what you know of, of how to teach somebody something else it's gonna be highly valuable and that's gonna put you in a position where you're looked upon as an expert and people won't because even consider if you have a degree or not they'll just know that man this guy know he knows what he's talking about or this gal knows she knows what she's talking about right now so maybe I should like hire them for this specific job and I could probably put them to the test and see what they know and how they can actually help me out <clears throat> so medium.com LinkedIn YouTube I can't stress those enough there's so much more to talk about those three platforms but those are the three I would highly recommend you jump right on get a YouTube channel get a LinkedIn profile get a medium.com account start writing start putting pieces of content out there start sharing your knowledge your thoughts and once you actually start learning about these things you'll start to formulate articulate your own opinion and your own insight uh, adding even more to the discussion of what's already being had out there so that's something to be that you can do number five if you're interested you can begin to create knowledge products such as courses and books which is what I actually got into the process of doing is taking everything that I know right now and putting it in course form um, because with courses from what I've learned because my mentality I'm not gonna lie, I'm guilty of this my mentality used to be that why do I need to buy a course if I have YouTube if it's out there for free and to an extent that's still true but with a course more than likely the person has invested so much time in building a course that is more organized it's more succinct there there's more it's just more intentional it's, it's more structured when you get a course it's from a to Z and you notice you're being taken on a journey from here to here versus just watching a YouTube playlist that may very well not be as structured or anything like that and people are willing to pay for 
courses and be able to teach you some things. And, and then with courses, I found out is that the, the teacher, the person who made the course, has some sort of executional game plan for you where um, you're given homework to actually see if, if you're able to put into action everything that you've learned. So, but a lot of people buy courses and they just feel good that they bought the course. So, uh, <clears throat> if you buy a course, you don't want to be one of those people. But if you sell a course and your students are doing that, then that's that's the student's problem. <laughs> okay, that that's the student's problem. But if you're able to take your knowledge of what you're learning and being able to put it from A to Z in a course, that's going to be beneficial for you because it's going to cement you more even as an expert. And this is with you not having a degree. All right. If you have a degree, it's a bonus. But, you know, the, bring the world of degree and online marketing and all this online marketing stuff together. And it's going to put you out there. Now, number six. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I, I hate this narrative of everybody just the Internet just going wild of just being an introvert. I, I hate this this push. Everybody's an introvert. I'm an introvert. Like, why Why is being introverted so celebrated? It's being extroverted. Is this bad thing? It's almost as if people want to celebrate staying in the house and staying behind a computer screen and hiding behind it and just being able to say, I don't have any social skills. I suck at talking to people, so I'm glad I could be an extrovert. I'm glad the Internet is here so I can hide and continue to band-aid the fact that I don't have any social skills. And you may argue with me like, and being an introvert isn't all about not having social skills or anything. It's just, you know, I just don't like people. Come on, get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Being an intro, go from introvert to extrovert. Because if you're doing all these things, you're putting yourself out there, people are going to want to talk to you. People are going to want to talk to you. And, I mean, you can't just deal with people behind a screen. And actually, when people get to see you face-to-face, -face, a lot of problems that end up happening that get misinterpreted online can easily be squashed when you see somebody offline and, and, and going from there. Now, we have, like, excellent tools like Zoom and that sort of thing because we are Internet-dependent right now, especially in this case, in, in our time, in this climate, we're Internet-dependent. So... Uh, but that doesn't mean that you're going to stay introverted. That doesn't mean you're going to stay introverted. It just doesn't. So if you're doing all these things, the consequence is going to be that you're, you are you have to be extroverted. You have to learn how to do online networking, um, getting out there, joining communities. And this is going to bleed into number seven, so I'm going to go ahead and cover that as well. But joining communities, especially if you have a YouTube channel and it's blowing up, it, you, you may to get the offer to have your own uh, YouTube community. So you're, you're being able to talk to people, help them out, uh, post things, kind of poll people to see what they what kind of content they want you to make. The, you know, the market can actually speak to you rather you dictating to the market, uh, offering to help and be as supportive to others by sharing your skills to solve their problems is going to put you in a high position that you never even thought possible. So. Um, so you want to leave this this whole world of being introverted. I don't know why this narrative is just being thrown out there i guess i could go down the the predictive route the conspiracy route and and kind of see that you know maybe it's the push to keep people more inside i guess but um but the, the, being extroverted i found is to is more beneficial than being introverted to just sit up here and think you can just gonna throw something out there online and never having to talk to people is, is dumb to even think that it is completely foolish because it's only by being uh, having a mentality of adding value to other people's lives and being helpful and not being selfish and just thinking that the people out, out there is there to serve you and you not serve them is crazy. It's super crazy. So, uh, and that's the thing about being a another misconception. That's why I made the, the arrogant program. I continue to make that cartoon series here in a little while. But if you go back and you check that other episode out, um, you, you tend to get programmers just because they have this they start feeling like gods because they have access to this knowledge that also not the rest of the world has access to to acquire right now you know i can go into the whole alchemical story and and you know having access to something that the rest of the world some secret knowledge the rest of the world doesn't have access to you start to feel godlike and powerful or something i don't know it gets it gets romanticized scientifically in that way because you are a program you have this knowledge base that a lot of people they just don't have and it just 
makes it just reinforces this notion that it's okay for you to be an introvert and never talk to people because you're a god and you sit amongst you know immortals above mortal men it, it's, it's crazy to me but anyway that's my rant for this part of the video but yeah this is a roadmap for you whether you are self-taught or you're actually determining if school is right for you if you go from number three on down to number seven if you follow that you should be golden now i, I can't really tell you specifically what coding base you should learn but i'm going to suggest start with html and css but don't stay there really try to master javascript and you won't ever really master but really get advanced at executing and putting out javascript applications you you're you're going to have like that's that's a golden skill right there right now all right it's a coding golden coding base because a lot of things run on javascript and you can actually build video games just using javascript through html5 canvas and some other platforms so um so yeah, th this is just it. Yeah, I really wanted to share this information because I, I'm really just I'm <laughs> kind of tired of people saying that this is a hard field to get into. That may very well be true, but just like you have the opportunity to create anything at this moment in time, you have a lot of opportunity to work at this, get better, and cement yourself into a position that uh, you never had the opportunity before without having school um, in mind so if you're able to get a, access to a computer which you should if you have a phone or if you're in school right now you're watching this at a high school where they're providing students with free technology then you have to take ownership of your own learning that's one of the things I'm trying to teach my students right now as well is take ownership of your learning so that's gonna be it for this video let me know if what you found helpful about it I would love to talk to you about it in the comment section below so definitely, definitely, we'll see you guys soon. Love y'all. God bless y'all. See you in the next video.